Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and today we're going to create an in-app purchase for iOS. This is something that Apple claim is one of the most popular and most successful revenue models on the App Store in 2013 and 2014. Uh, sadly, they've made it so super complicated to implement that I don't know, we just need to have a little chat about that. It's not that complex when you once you get the hang of it, but uh, for newcomers, this is a total nightmare, and it took me many, many weeks and months to implement this successfully in my first app. So I'm going to show you today what I've learned. In this course, we're going to create a single view application. There's nothing special about it. It's just going to have two buttons. Uh, one of them is there to buy the full version. So once we press that, the user can buy the full version. We're not really going to do much with it. We're just going to change a label. That's as much as our full version can do, but it'll demonstrate the concept. So as soon as we do that and the user agrees to say, yes, I'd like to purchase your app for $9 million, the App Store is then asked for a payment, and then the App Store gets back to our app via a delegate method, and that tells us, yep, that payment went through OK, and we can go and unlock the full version. That's a basic overview of what's happening in in-app purchases. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to create, with our single view application, we're going to create our own shop class. And we do that so that we can reuse it later in other apps, where that shop class can then be called from another class. So we're going to implement a delegate in our own shop class. And this, I'm going to explain this to you step by step. There's nothing to be afraid of. To kick things off with making a purchase, we're going to create an SK products request and start it. This is a part of store kit, SK is for store kit, and that's going to kick things off. The App Store is going to get notified and we're asking, hey, I'm requesting product XYZ, is that available? And then the App Store is going to get back to us uh, via a delegate and it will say, yes, it is, and this is the description and this is the price. We then go and build our store UI. So in our example, this is just going to be a simple UI alert view that we're going to bring up with that description and the title of our in-app purchase straight from iTunes Connect. And we're going to present that with buttons that say, uh, yep, yeah, please purchase this for whatever it is, 99 cents or $699. Oh, no thanks, I'll do this later. And we're also going to talk about how to restore purchases. That's all going to be handled by that same UI. So once the user says, yes, I'd like to buy this, then we're going to create an SK payment and add it to the SK payment queue. That's a singleton method that just gets called and we're going to add a payment to it. That's basically in, in English. That means, hey, App Store, please take this payment. The App Store then is going to get back to us a second time. And this needs to be implemented in something like the app delegate. We're going to implement it in the app delegate because it needs to be an omnipresent observer that is constantly listening to a transaction that the app store gets back to us with and says, hey, I've got this transaction. I've just taken payment from the customer. Please go ahead and unlock the full version or even to tell us, hey, there was something wrong. And we do that by implementing the SK transaction observer protocol, really, uh, and react to what the App Store tells us. Okay, this is a lot to take in, I know, and I'm pretty much following an article that I've written that I'll reference at the bottom of this video. The tools that we're going to use for this is Xcode 5.1, and before you ask, yes, we're going to do all this in Objective-C. It's not going to be Swift quite yet. Swift has just been announced this week, uh, so it's a little early for me to do tutorials on that. Besides, it's still under non-disclosure agreement. So uh, we're going to do this so that it works on iOS 7.1, and it will also work under iOS 6, which is good news if you want to support older devices. What we're also going to need is an app ID with an existing product. And to test this, we need an iTunes Connect test user account. And what that is is something that lets us connect to the App Store as if it was for real, but no money will change hands. So you can test as many times as you like. And because the iOS simulator doesn't have the App Store on it, we're going to have to test this with a real device. Sounds good. Let's get going with this. First, I'd like to discuss what we need to do before we even 
get our hands on the code. We need to set something up in iTunes Connect and in Member Center. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to create a provisioning profile. I've already got mine set up, but I will tell you exactly where that is. I've also, by the way, if you've watched my iCloud course, uh, that is explained there as well. If you want to, if you have any questions about how to create a provisioning profile, that's explained in the iCloud course. We're also going to need an explicit app ID. Uh, usually if you set up a brand new app ID, it already comes with Game Center and in-app purchases enabled, so we don't have to do any messing there, but it needs to be one that you can link to. And the reason for that is that we have to basically create a brand new app in iTunes Connect, complete with screenshots and dummy artwork. And that app needs a proper app ID. This is so that your app can talk to the App Store and to Apple's backend system and so that the iTunes Connect system or the App Store can send those messages back that your app can listen to. We also need to create, aside from our app, we need to create an in-app product and set a price and a title and a description. And we even need to provide a screenshot for that. Don't get discouraged by all that. It's called the in-app purchase paradox, I believe. Erica Sadoon called this once. And yeah, it's, you have to do this, otherwise the iTunes Connect isn't ready to communicate with your app. So before we get our hands dirty with any coding, this is what we're going to do. We'll surf the web and set all that up. Let's start with Member Center. Head over to developer.apple.com. Yes, we're introducing Swift. We know, we know. And on the bottom here, you can see the iOS Dev Center. Head over there. I'm already logged in here. And at the top right corner, you go to Certificates, Identifiers, and Profiles. And when you do that, you get this screen here for the selection iOS, Mac apps, Safari extensions. And what you're interested in is on the iOS apps, the identifiers. And this will show you all the app IDs. Don't worry if you went to another tab there. As long as you can find identifiers, app IDs, you're on the right track. So here are all my app IDs and the reverse domain notation here, the uh, app identifier. And I've already created mine here. This mine is called Buy Me. And if I click on that, I can see that Game Center and in-app purchase is enabled. iCloud, this is something uh, that we're not gonna use here, so yours doesn't need to be enabled here. As soon as you create a new app ID, in-app purchase is automatically enabled. So all you need to do is create one with that little plus sign here. I'm not gonna do that because I've got mine, but basically give it a name, something you can remember, put in the bundle ID, this needs to be unique, something like uh, com your domain, your app and this is something you can copy and then you know remember that you have it hit continue and you know we went through this in the iCloud video so you know if you have any questions watch the beginning of that and that'll show you how to set up an app ID and a provisioning profile next up is iTunes Connect this is a similar thing uh, iTunes Connect .apple .com. log in with your developer ID and on this screen, under Manage Your Apps, if this is a new app ID you're setting up, click Add New App. If you want to add an in-app purchase to an existing app, just pick the app that you want to look at. So in my case, I already have one set up. Mine's called Buy Me, Testing In-App Purchases. There we go. So if you're setting this up for the first time, you'll see a screen similar to this that'll prompt you to put in a description and specify an app logo and even specify screenshots. And all this needs to be set up before we can start creating our first in-app purchase. Don't worry about the upload binary button. We're not gonna upload any code, but this needs to be set up on the system. So once you've done that, head back to app summary. And on the right hand side here, find the Manage In-App Purchases tab. Click that and you'll get a list of the in-app purchase products you've set up. I've already got a few, but I'm gonna set up a brand new one for our testing exercise here. Top button here is Create New. And the first thing we can select is what type of in-app purchase you wanna use. This explains it and you know probably what the different 
in-app purchase types are that you can have consumables like coins in a game uh, you have to buy them over and over and they uh, usually don't expire but the game uses these things up could be I don't know a credit for a fax app for example uh, non-consumable that's what we're gonna do uh, that is you pay once and the purchase is valid kind of forever so that's usually implemented in apps that have a free and a pro version. If you want to unlock the pro version, it's a non-consumable and you pay once and you can restore that purchase on all your other devices and that's what we're going to do. Auto-renewable subscription, that's something like a newspaper free subscription and non-renewing subscription. Those are kind of fall in this, into the same category. We're not going to be dealing with that. Non-consumable is what we're after. If you're implementing something that perishes while the user is using it in your app, then that's a consumable. So I'm using non-consumable here, and I can give it a reference name. So that's not the title, that's just for me a reference. So I'm going to call it screencast test. You can always, if you have questions, just click that little question mark here. Product ID, this is a little bit like what you use for your bundle ID. Usually, and you don't have to do it that way, but usually you follow this pattern that a com dot your, your domain dot your app dot your in app so the first part up until here is the same as your bundle ID that's what the usual pattern is and then followed by a dot and then followed by uniquely identifiable in-app purchase which identifies this very product so in my case uh, that's not actually my product ID mine is com and first Lewis by me and I'm going to call it dot screencast. I'm going to copy that so I can use it in Xcode in a moment. Pricing and availability you have to uh, say yes it's clear for sale or no if you're not quite ready yet. Select the price tier so you can go up to you know tier 87 which I think is $700 or something. If your app sells for that congratulations. <laughs> You can, as of iOS 6, I believe, you can set up free in-app purchases as well. Uh, the good thing is that if you ever wanted to give your app away for free and it has an in-app purchase, then you know free is the way to go for a period of time to give that away to your users for free. Or just select anything else. I'm going to select Tier 2 here and get presented with how much that is in the different territories here. So Tier 2 is $1.99 and in the UK it's £1.49 right now. These prices fluctuate. Select it and then have a look at the language tab here. You can select a language for each territory if you like and then each territory's in-app purchases displayed in a different language. So if you have a team of translators working here this is, uh, this is a great way. We need one which is English so let's add that. English the default language. And this display name and the description, we're going to get that in our app once we connect to the App Store for the first time. We're going to set up this product request and that will send us the display name and the description per product. So I'm going to call mine screencast test. So whatever we're typing in here will appear in the app in our alert view. Rather than a test description like I'm doing here now, you should probably describe what this in-app purchase actually does. So for example, this will unlock the full version which will remove limitation X, Y, Z and will remove advertising, for example. Hit save. You can also choose to host content with Apple. We're not going to go through that procedure here, but just know that if you hit yes, you can host up to two gigabytes of a bundle or of a kind of a folder per in-app purchase with Apple. So you don't have to pay anyone for hosting. You don't have to mess with server architecture to get extra content, additional content into your app. Apple can host all that for you for free. Review notes is for the Apple review team. You can explain in detail what that in-app purchase does and perhaps even give them a test user and password so that they can test the in-app purchase at their end. I'm going to leave this blank for now. You get the drift here. And screenshot for review. So you have to have at least one screenshot. In the real world, this is going to demonstrate what your in-app purchase UI looks like. So grab a screen from your iPhone or your iPad as soon as your UI comes up that will ask this is the product, 
here are your purchase options. Apple want to see that. I've got one here from an app I've made earlier. Hit save. And that's it. Here it is, you may only have one there, and we're only we're gonna pretend we're only having one. This is just my test account here, so you get the picture. Screencast test is the name of my in-app purchase and the product ID or bundle identifier of that in-app purchase I've already copied. Click done and done. That's us done with the member center, that's us done with iTunes Connect. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to create that custom shop class and how to call it from our view controller. The free portion of the video ends here, but if you'd like to see the full version, you can. Just sign up to my member section on my iOS dev diary at pinkstone.co.uk. Membership, as you can imagine, has its benefits. For example, you can get access to all the full-length screencasts I've done on this topic. You also get access to hundreds of detailed articles with tips and tricks on iOS development, meant to be understood and written in a way that you can actually follow them. Membership also comes with a convenient bookmarking feature. Articles that are more relevant to you, you just bookmark and you can recall them right there on the website. We also have flexible membership terms, so if you'd rather join for shorter periods of time or for an entire lifetime, we've got you covered. So what are you waiting for? Get access to the good stuff right away. Sign up now at pinkstone.co.uk and I will see you on the other side.